Hi, welcome to my channel, Broom Roller. I'm Dan, and I'm standing here at the base of a unique loam rhythm trail that I built here in Washington. I've always wanted to ride a trail like this, and I've never been able to find one with this unique set of features all combined into one trail. So I'll take you up and we can check it out. So one of the features is that it's narrow. Narrowness kind of gives you a sense of relative speed. And to go faster on a narrow trail requires more accuracy. And the benefit is that you don't have to go at an absolute fast speed, it's relative speed. It feels faster than it actually is. Another element is that I wanted to build a trail that doesn't have broad sweeping berms, lots of turns, but with more ruts over berms. To keep it real fun, I wanted the turns to be more like sideways transitions rather than a big sweeping berm you ride around like a zombie waiting for it to end. And I wanted the trail to be a rhythm trail, kind of like a flow trail, but closer to, I'd say, the rhythm of a, of a supercross track, the main rut line through a supercross track. And there's a lot of flow trails that are usually hard-packed, machine-built, wide trails. So that brings me to the main element of the trail, is that it's loam. Now, when I say loam, I'm not really talking about the dictionary definition, the geological definition of loam. I'm talking about an experience that mountain bikers are usually talking about when they say a trail is loamy or a loam trail. And that's a uh, combination of decomposing material mixing into the dirt at the right moisture level. And it creates a really neat feeling to ride on it. One of the things about a loam trail, though, is once they get ridden a lot, found out about especially, you hear about a lot of trails that are have loam in the name or are described as a loam trail, you show up, and it's all hard packed. The loam is gone. So what I've done to retain the loam is first I scraped everything away on the trail corridor. I scraped it clean. Then I shaped it. I dug all the rollers, the doubles, the sideways bank transitions, and shaped them just like a flow trail. Then I chopped the, the decomposing organic material that you find just beneath the surface here. This is the dry, freshly fallen stuff. And then you get into the, the juice here, this stuff. I chopped that into the dirt. It's not a permanent solution. I've kind of come back a couple times. The trail's been running for about two full seasons now, and I've uh, got up and down the trail and kind of re-chopped it up a bunch. It's still a pretty secret trail, so it doesn't get much traffic, and it gets sort of a superficial pack just from getting rained on a lot. But one of the neat things about this terrain, and especially how I built the trail, is that when it does get rained on a lot, the loam barely goes anywhere. And that's partially due to the layout, the shape of the trail. There's nowhere water can sheet up and get running speed on because there's constant, effectively, there's constant water bars all up and down the trail. And then also, the fact that it's loose and not packed down allows the water to just drain directly straight down into the ground instead of sheeting up and carrying the particles away. Instead of cutting the trail in the way I normally would and leaving it and riding it, I've mimicked the way the forest floor behaves. The forest floor doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't lose its loam. It's got loam sitting under there, decomposing through all kinds of rainstorms. So that chopping of the organic material into the shaped surface it also keeps it from packing down too much, retaining its loam. Now, some parts of the trail I put a lot more shovel work into, and they're a little firmer up where the trail mellows out a little bit. This bottom section of the trail is the steepest part and the loamiest part. The upper half of the trail is a little more packed, but still has a very fluffy, loamy feeling, just not quite as deep, and it gets into more uh, banked transitions instead of uh, rut turns like these. And I've found that some of my favorite turns are four inch high walls that you slap into. This rut turn has a real steep entrance and you slam into this juicy, just fluffiest loam right here. One of the other key features of this trail is I wanted to make it almost entry level. I'd say maybe beginner intermediate is where you would want to start. That makes it fun to ride when you're an advanced rider and you just want to cruise down it but it also has a higher skill ceiling than a lot of flow, flow type trails do in that the faster you go, the more precise you need to be. And the more these corners become transitions, 
that you're popping into and out of. So up ahead, I'll show you some of the more bank transition sections of trail. So I walked this route the trail ended up being on all summer long, taking a machete and making a corridor through, sometimes backing up and changing the route when I found some terrain that worked a little more interesting. Um, you know, even though it's a rhythm trail, so everything's gonna be kind of spaced somewhat similarly, uh, depending on the steepness, sometimes it grows a little so that the, the feeling overall and the speed, so the feeling of the trail, the rhythm stays basically the same, even though some parts are going quite a bit faster than others. Um, like this section, I ended up changing. It used to be go around the left and do kind of a, a traverse across and down. And I found this really interesting part. This is basically the only rock garden on the trail. There's like five rocks here, but you come off this kicker here and you have a little decision maker around this big rock and then a couple more here. And then you've got this catch slapper berm that now that I've gotten going faster for me on this trail, I come barreling into this and skip almost that entire first section with the big rock, slam into this and then bounce into this one and then bounce down this steep section here, slap that berm, bounce again, opposite slide into that, that rut down there, a left hand to right hand skid uh, rut hookup. And so this is a really cool natural section of trail that I incorporated in instead of just trying to uh, uh, take the the for, sort of first route that I that I walked, which I think is an easy thing to do when you're building a trail is just kind of walk the most obvious route and build the trail there um, instead of really scouting all over and and um, seeing if there's something more interesting you could come up with with a little more work. And this like every section of this trail is, is like my favorite section. <laughs> there's so much interesting. It's just interesting and engaging the whole way down. Even though it's about, I've got my run time down to, uh, I think, a minute 36 seconds. Um, it's a two minute trail if you're just cruising. Up ahead here is some more, more intensive dirt work where it's a little less loamy and more, more like a traditional flow trail, but of course narrow. This is a fun scrub to do. Catch that broom there and then hit the opposite hip down into the five rock garden. And here we get into a little more flatter terrain so the sculpting gets more intense. A little more of a technical rhythm, but all still rollable, of course. Super fun. Dipping just slightly back and forth a little to make it fun instead of straight jumps. And when I say the trail is unique, I just mean it's unique to me. I haven't seen another trail like this. I'm sure there are trails similar to this one. I um, just haven't seen any around the area of Washington that I moved to a couple years ago yet. I'm sure there are lots of secret trails that I haven't seen, just like this is a semi-secret trail that a lot of people haven't seen. Uh, most of the public trails here are pretty wide, pretty straight machine-built trails. There's some hand-built public trails as well, and they're all really good, but none of them quite scratch that that rut-slapping, loose dirt itch that I had. So that's been really fun to get this trail built that I've had in my head for a while. So even though it's only a minute and a half at a fast pace to two minutes at a casual pace, the trail feels a lot longer than it actually is because it's so engaging. The narrowness, the rhythm, the vertical transitions, as well as all the way to the banked transitions to the rut berms. There's just a ton going on the whole way down. And by the end of it, especially if you're pushing, you're kind of glad it isn't much longer. It's kind of like how a pack of steep dirt jumps feels longer than it is because the time you're, you're spent riding it is so, is so packed full and engaging. You're not waiting for the next feature. Everything's just right there one after another. Uh, every section of the trail is just as fun as the last one, so. We're getting pretty close to the top of the trail now, and this is a steep chute near the top of the trail. This first hit is at the very top, and you just kind of send it off into oblivion here. It's really fun. You can kind of go as big as you want, land in the pocket there, or just roll over, land right here. And then you've got a set of three doubles skipping down the hill, curving around to the left into that step up that we were just at the base of. This is probably the straightest part of the trail that kind of hugs this side of the ravine and then back onto the ridge. And then the rest of the trail is, uh, is more of a slalom, but the shoot is really fun. All right, I'm at the top of the Loam Rhythm Rut Trail. Cookie dough, and it's a nice overcast day. It's gonna rain in a couple hours, so I figured instead of digging, I'd take some fresh runs uh, without the bag on my back. Usually when I ride this trail, I've got the backpack and I'm tired from digging and I've got the tripod in the backpack from time-lapse of building the new jump track. So 
Yesterday after I was done digging, I rode the trail with the backpack on and actually got my fastest time so far. It was like a 133 or 132. Not super accurate. I just use a reference point like this stump here for the beginning and then the final route I roll over at the bottom of the track for the end. And that was five seconds faster than the last time I filmed it. And then, which was seven seconds faster than the time before that. So riding this trail has really taught me a lot more about bike handling, even though I'm 47 and been riding forever. But I kind of found a new um, perspective on, on body position and kind of how they say swinging off the back. It kind of clicked for me. I ride this trail the best when I just kind of roll down when not trying to do anything and I just kind of let the speed happen. I just kind of get off the brakes more and more and lean into each corner farther and further. So yeah, I'm not going to try. I'm just going to I'm just going to roll down it and uh if the speed comes it comes. If not, it's a chill fun ride no matter how fast you go. Even riding that on this trail dead tired is super fun still. All right. Got the squeakiest helmet in the world, the MIPS liner. All right. That was deep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, still riding a little stiff. <sighs> Maybe I need to do some digging first. My body's so contorted into a digging shape. I gotta build some trail to loosen up. That definitely wasn't a fast run. <sighs> All right, go back up. Maybe hit the jump trail, relax a little bit. 